When it comes to big-time quarterbacks in college football, most people have had their eyes on Michael Penix, Caleb Williams, or Bo Nix. Those three guys are all listed near the top of the Heisman boards right now, and they have had really good seasons. Maybe you've noticed the rise of Carson Beck, have seen the development of Jalen Milrow, or are really high on J.J. McCarthy, but while you guys have been talking about them, there's been one quarterback who has steadily rose to the top and is right now the best quarterback in college football, and in my opinion, should win the Heisman Trophy. That guy is Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels had one of the most insane games in college football history this past weekend, and is right now playing his way into both the Heisman Trophy and a first round draft selection. He's right now proving he is the best quarterback in all of college football, and his stats don't lie. It's very similar to 2019 LSU, and while the Tigers have lost a couple of games this year, you can blame that on the defense and not on the offense. In today's video though, we're gonna focus on Jaden Daniels. We're gonna talk about how he got to this point, how his career was almost over at Arizona State, and how he has turned into a monster player for LSU. But before we get started, if you're a big college football fan, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you want to support today's video, and turn on post notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now let's get started and talk about the insane rise of Jaden Daniels. So going back in time, at a young age, Jaden Daniels knew he wanted to play football. He also said he wanted to play at a high level, and luckily his father knew what he was doing and had experience with this. His dad, Jay, played defensive back at Washington and Iowa State, and he knew he could instill the right traits in his son, and he would be great. They would watch Joe Montana, John Elway, and Warren Moon together, and Jaden developed a huge love for the game of football. According to his dad, he always had it. At eight years old, he had speed, lanky range, and athleticism, and was made to be a perfect corner just like him. Except, he wanted to play quarterback. At the time, they grew up in Southern California, and Daniels was a guy who was naturally quiet, didn't show a whole lot of emotion, and never got too high or low on himself. That has been consistent in his game throughout college. At 10 years old, Jaden began working with a quarterback trainer, and the two would click. By the time Jaden arrived at Cajun High School, he became the starting quarterback. At the time, though, he was still the small, lanky player he is today. He was 5'10 and only 137 pounds. He was actually thin enough that the school required him to get medical clearance, and a doctor would have to sign off on him so he could play in the game. The dad said, quote, The first doctor said absolutely not, so we had to go to a second one. What transpired over the next four years at Cajun High School for Jaden was insane. He had one of the best careers in California high school football history, and only trailed Jake Browning and eventually Ethan Garbers. In total, he finished with 14,007 passing yards, 3,645 rushing yards, and 211 touchdowns. While being so dominant, he was also humble. Daniel said, quote, I'm just blessed to have the receivers that I've had that have come through and helped me. I go out there and have fun and make plays and just try to win football games. He even did that with an injury as a freshman as he cracked his wrist in his final game and as a sophomore, broke his thumb and played the rest of the year. He also lost two state title games, so it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows for him, but during his junior season, that is when scouts began to take notice. He threw for over 5,000 yards with 62 touchdowns and only had five picks. He was the third best passer in all of high school football, and he also ran for over 1,000 yards and 15 touchdowns as well. He started to get a ton of hype after his junior year as he got offers from Nevada, Arizona, and New Mexico. At the time, those weren't the biggest offers, but then eventually Florida State, Alabama, Ohio State, USC, Georgia, Nebraska, and Oregon all started calling his name, and he was blowing up into a blue chip recruit. Where would he eventually go? Well, during his signing day ceremony at Cajun, he had four hats. He had UCLA, Cal, Utah, and Arizona State. It was safe to say he was going to be playing in the Pac-12. Instead of picking one of the hats though, he stood up and unzipped his sweatshirt which had a Sun Devils t-shirt. He was now going to go to Arizona State. Apparently Arizona State was somewhat late to his recruitment, but he was super impressed by his trip there. He really fell in love with head coach Herm Edwards. Jaden said, quote, Coach Edwards, the first thing he said was he was a man of his word. I didn't really get that from other coaches, and him saying that was showing that if he says something, he's going to do it, and I like that. By the time he signed, he was a near five-star prospect, but there was another kid in the area who was getting substantially more hype than him. That was Bryce Young. Jane Daniels and Bryce Young would later battle it out in college, but they had known each other since they were in elementary school, and they competed in youth games and camp. Daniels said, quote, You know, he's never actually beaten me. While well, most of the time quarterbacks come in in red shirt, Jaden was getting instant hype as their longtime quarterback Manny Wilkins was now done and Herm Edwards brought in three quarterbacks. They got Joey Yellen, Ethan Long, and of course Jaden. He was the highest rated of the bunch as according to 24-7 Sports, Daniels was a four-star recruit, the number one dual threat quarterback, and the 35th best player in the class of 2019. He was so close to being a five-star. So, how would Jaden end up doing at Arizona State? Jaden would arrive at Arizona State and eventually beat out Dylan Sterling Cole for the starting job. 
He would have a ton of hype going into the 2019 season, and this would by far be his best season in an Arizona State uniform. In 2019, he ended up finishing with 2,943 passing yards, 17 touchdowns, and only two picks. He also had nearly 400 yards and three touchdowns on the ground, and his most notable performance came against number six, Oregon. He famously dueled it out with Justin Herbert, and he threw for 408 yards and three touchdowns, and they knocked number six Oregon into the college football playoff. As I said, he ended up wowing his freshman year and showed off both his arm and his mobility. Unfortunately, after his freshman year, things would get very difficult for Jaden. He only played in four games in 2020 and only passed for 700 yards, five touchdowns, and a pick. No one could really blame him though, because the 2020 season was weird. He was still getting a decent amount of hype though for the 2022 NFL Draft, and if he could have a big 2021 season, he'd be off to the NFL and starting his professional career. Fortunately, 2021 was a disaster for him. He only threw for 2,380 yards with 10 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. Not only was he not making big plays, but he was turning the ball over and he had regressed substantially. No longer was he a big time NFL Draft prospect and things were really tough for him. He unfortunately saw multiple family members pass away during that time, which put him in a really dark spot, and he was also the center of a recruiting scandal as Arizona State was investigated, and it was implied that Jaden Daniels and his family broke the rules during the recruiting process. Those two situations were rough, and fans were also really harsh on him. They claimed he wasn't a good enough leader, that he wasn't taking charge, and didn't seem to care. Many thought that he was a prima donna, and that he was just a passive player who didn't want to be there and thought he was too good for everyone else. People didn't know what was actually going on and that he was just a quiet, non-vocal player. At the end of the day, most people forgot about his near five-star status. And while he was an afterthought, Daniel still wanted to play big time football at a blue blood. His dad said he wanted to play in the SEC with future NFL talent and wanted a chance to show just how good he could be. Daniel said, quote, I just want the opportunity to come play at the highest level and help a powerhouse win another national championship. Because of that, he'd have to enter the transfer portal and find a new school. Three weeks after he entered, he decided to go to LSU. This was a shock to many, as they had new head coach Brian Kelly, and already had Miles Brennan, Garrett Nussmeyer, and Walker Howard. All three of those guys were groomed to be the next LSU quarterback, but now Jaden Daniels was putting himself in the mix. One beat writer said, quote, the best case scenario is that Daniels pushes Brennan for the starting job, and then battles Garrett Nussmeyer for the backup job in 2022, and waits for Walker Howard to develop. While many doubted this, even the head coach did. Kelly said he initially had doubts about Daniels as well, and whether he was durable and could make good decisions. He wasn't sold that he was their guy, and they didn't think that he would actually beat out Nussmeyer for the job. Daniels would end up injuring his foot as he got to campus, and Kelly thought that he was going to be soft. Instead, he battled through the injury, was tough, and won the starting job. His first start though would be difficult, as he would come against Florida State, and they lost by way of a heartbreaker. After tying the game, Florida State blocked the extra point, and LSU had a heartbreaking defeat. It was one of the most difficult openers in LSU history, as this was the second time since 1958 that LSU would open the year with both a new head coach and a new starter. From there though, Daniels would change the narrative. People forget that Joe Burrow had a rough 2018 season, and over time, he figured it out and won the Heisman. Little did anybody know, Daniels would take a similar path. He'd end up having a really good 2022 season, as he then led them to four straight wins. Unfortunately, they got blown out by Tennessee, but after that, Daniels would have an electric finish to the season. He had six touchdowns against Florida, had five in a win over number seven Old Miss, and then dazzled with three touchdowns and an overtime victory over number six Alabama. This was his long awaited duel at Bryce Young and his entrance into the stratosphere of college football. He then led them to wins over Arkansas and UAB before unfortunately losing to Texas A&M. Because of Daniels, they ended up getting the SEC championship game where they would eventually lose to Georgia and then he'd play sparingly in their bowl victory over Purdue. In total, he finished with 2,900 passing yards, 17 touchdowns, and nearly 1,000 yards and 11 scores on the ground. He probably could have been a mid round draft pick, but he decided to come back for one last season and get even better. After LSU lost the SEC championship game, Daniels didn't think the NFL teams would take a chance on him, and he came up with a plan to become even better. He met with Brian Kelly and asked, what can we do to get better? Well, LSU then presented a plan for him. They wanted to get his weight up, wanted to work on his leadership, and work on all the technicalities that needed to be improved. They made a spreadsheet, and he came up with a plan mixed with both short-term and long-term goals. His goal was to gain 15 pounds, he wanted to throw for more than 4,000 yards, and wanted to work more on his deep ball. He knew that if he made small improvements, that he could end up being a big-time NFL player. He said, quote, I don't want to come back and be the same player. If that was the case, I might as well have left last year. So, how did that end up working for Jaden this year? Well, he has been absolutely terrific. In week one, they would duel it out at Florida State, and this was Jaden's worst game of the year. In a blowout loss to the Seminoles, he did combine for over 400 yards, but only had one touchdown and really wasn't himself. 
He took a bunch of major hits in that game, and that has also been a narrative throughout the season that he just takes big hit after big hit. After that though, he's gone on a tear. He threw five touchdowns in a win over Grambling, had four touchdowns in a win over Mississippi State, and then had four touchdowns in a win over Arkansas. He was now dominating, and it didn't stop there. He had over 500 yards and five touchdowns, and then had four touchdowns and a win over Mizzou. Despite getting his ribs hurt, he eventually led them down the field, and they beat number 21 Mizzou, which is a pretty big win. After that, he had three touchdowns against Auburn, had four touchdowns against Army, and then had three touchdowns and a loss to Alabama. In that Bama game, though, he showed what he's really about. He had over 200 yards passing and two touchdowns, and also had nearly 200 yards rushing. He truly has become one of the best dual threat quarterbacks in the country, and he carried that into last week's win against Florida. Against the Gators, he threw for 372 yards with three touchdowns, and then went for over 234 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. They completely dominated Florida at home, and this made FBS history. He had 606 total yards, and became the first quarterback in the FBS to have at least 350 yards passing and 200 yards rushing in a game. Now the Heisman hype for Daniels has really begun. He is the best stats ranking quarterback, and is truly completely dominating. It just depends on what your version of the Heisman is. Is it the best player on the best team, or is it the most impactful player? That's the question that needs to be hashed out, but Brian Kelly has his opinion. He said, quote, If Daniels didn't win the Heisman Trophy tonight, he has to be the leading candidate. Unless the Heisman is just about popularity, then if you want it to be about popularity, then fine. But regardless, he's the best player in college football. He did something tonight that no one has ever done, and if that doesn't make you the leading candidate, then maybe the Heisman isn't really for the best player. I think to a degree, Kelly is right. Right now, I think no player is dominating college football like Jaden is, and while I'd still personally probably pick Michael Penix to win the award, I would like to see him step it up a little bit more in these last few weeks. But Jaden has had the best season of all the Heisman candidates so far, and it's more than just statistics. He's made big plays and pro-level throws week in and week out, and unfortunately, his team around him has failed him. The narrative is that in order to win the Heisman, you need to be on the best team or close to the top, but LSU's defense has been so pathetic, they haven't been able to really keep them in games, and their offense just can't keep up. This Tigers offense is definitely elite, and is very similar to the 2019 team. Daniels has insane numbers, and has two superstar receivers who are going to be first round picks. Both Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors are going to be first team all SEC players, and are likely going to be in the first round. Those two are completely dominating at the receiver spot, just like Jefferson and Chase did, and this team is eerily similar to 2019, except the defense. It's crazy though, at one point pretty much everyone gave up on Jaden, and thought he was just washed up and would be on the bench. They forgot about his five star status and his domination in high school, and now he's finally putting it all together and has become the best quarterback in the country. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you did, be sure to let me know down below. Let me know your thoughts on his Heisman campaign, and if not, who should win it. Also, let me know what player I should do a feature on next. And before you go, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos in the end screen, including my video about the rise of Ollie Gordon. Hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.